Man, what's the YouTube man? Shit boy, my captain's AK missing that prayer boy. And uh, today's video, we got corrupted cop caught on his own body cam harassing innocent, innocent um citizen. If he has any man, like, share, share me on other vibe, man. Let's get it. Where's your link down below in the description? Down below, man. Down below. Go to the video channel. Be sure to check out the description below and give them the credit that they deserve. On September 14th, 2023, a deputy with the Lyon County Sheriff's Office responded to a potentially suspicious bonfire near an apartment building in Fernley, Nevada. According to the Sheriff's Office, the apartment building was located in a so-called high crime area, with records indicating that 80 calls for various criminal complaints have been generated by the known permanent and residents of the complex. As the deputy approached the fire, he observed an individual later identified as James Gresham leaving on a bicycle. The residents who remained indicated that they did not know Mr. Gresham, and the deputy got back in his vehicle and caught up with him. The encounter that followed was captured on the deputy's body camera. What's up, my man? Come here. Come here. Oh, yeah, no, put the bike down. Put the bike Dang, down. He's like already aggressive, already? Already like aggressive, like... Uh... You can tell when he got out the car, like, like. Down. Oh, bike, my bike. Because I told you to put the bike down. Why are you stopping me right now? Because you're riding your bike with no fucking light I'm on. I'm riding it. I gotta put the bike I gotta down. Right here. Dude, put my the bike right down. Here. Said, no, fuck put that. the bike down, James. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. Turn around. Put your hands behind your back. I'm going to tase you, dude. What have I Get on the ground, James. What have I done wrong? 562 King. Get what on the ground. Wrong? I've not done nothing Get wrong. on the ground, James. I've done nothing wrong. Am I being detained? Get on the ground, James. He's Get on, on the, the ground, ground. James. You, you are being detained, you idiot. Get on the ground. I'm on the ground. I'm a tase you, dude. Get on the ground. Bro, he's on the ground. What are you talking about? I mean, he's on his knees, Paul, but like, bro, he bro, he has nothing. Bro, this is why I just don't like cops that be like this, bro. See, bro, if you're scared or anything, then why are you why are you becoming a cop? I feel like people that become cops have been bullied in school, haven't been. I feel like people like that have, are cops have been bullied or something because it's like, bro, what what are you tasting for? Like, you're not telling them what he did. How is how is he how is he detained? Well, what did he do? He didn't do nothing. Put the flashlight down. Am I being detained? Yes. For what? Put your hands behind your back. For what? Put your hands behind your what back. What am I being detained for? For not listening. Why Drop that flashlight. That's not Drop that's that not, that's flashlight. Not a okay. reason. That's not a reason, but all right. Yeah, it is. You took so. off. You still. Call your supervisor. Relax. No, I'm not relaxing. Call your supervisor. This harassment is going to stop. Shut up. My I am the supervisor. Shut First up. First Amendment audit. Yeah, try the Fifth First Amendment. Amendment. Shut First up. First Amendment audit. You have no reason to stop me right now. Yeah. None. You're riding your bike with no See, lights on. Right there in my hand. It's got to be on the on bike. The bike. Dip. It was on the bike. I just took it off. No, I just watched you right away you when I rolled up. Me. You didn't tell me to stop. You have no crime I committed. 562 King. No. I'm detained. 29 on last Call aggression, first of James. Oh, you still on court conditions, James? Oh, no, I'm not. No? I have any court conditions, none. Well, I've not committed a crime. You have no reason to stop Yeah, me. I did. When I told you to stop. I'd like to stop to your... Yeah. Your, I stopped when you told yeah, me... Yeah, if you're arguing with me. I'm going to argue and with you. And I had to pull my taser you out. You have no reason to stop me. Yes, I do. None. What? Yeah, James. It's called riding a bike without a headlamp. I got a headlight right there. It's not on the bike, I'll James. Your friend. Hey, I'm not on a bike. I'm in a parking lot, private property. What are you doing here? You got any dope on you, James? No, I don't. Now what? I'm going to your stand up. I'm going to stand up. <clears throat> Where's your seat, Face back? away. Put Where's your feet apart. You got any weapons on you? Nope. You got a Check knife on you? Yeah. I know this. I have, I'm being detained for no reason. I want to talk to your supervisor. Yeah. In violation of my First Amendment rights, and my fifth, and my fourth, and my ninth. Feet apart, James. Yeah, sure. Face the car. Face the car. I want to see your supervisor. Oh, man. I just told you. <laughs> no. Dumb private property. I'm right here in my house. I live right there. Tell her. What's your date of birth, James? Five twenty. I don't have to answer your question. Yeah, you do. I'm yeah. Under you are the subject of investigation. For yeah. For what? For resisting right now. What's, what's my crime? For resisting. What's my crime? 
resisting what bro, bro what resisting he was where in this clip was he resisting at where was he resisting that? Yes, resisting. I'm not resisting. Yeah. Crying. Yeah. Where? I told you already. I already told you. This crap is some bullshit. Yeah, this nigga, bro. Okay. He's going to jail. He's not. Yep. Look at You're this. He's going to jail, dude. For what? What's that for, for arguing? I'm asking you. The deputy informs Mr. Gresham that he's going to jail for resisting. What? How's he going to jail for resisting? He wasn't resisting arrest. Then he said you're going to jail because arguing. This cop. According to the state resisting statute, uh, which is found in section 199.280 of the Nevada Revised crazy, Statutes, crazy, quote, crazy a person work, who man. willfully resists, <laughs> delays, or obstructs a public officer in discharging or attempting to discharge any legal duty of his or her office shall be punished. Similarly, section 197.190 of the Revised Statutes, which codifies the offense of obstructing a public officer, states that, quote, every person who shall willfully hinder, delay, or obstruct any public officer in the discharge of official power hours or duties shall be guilty of a misdemeanor. In the 2024 case of Wilson versus the First Judicial District Court of the State, the Court of Appeals of Nevada held that in order to ensure that the obstruction statute did not violate the First Amendment, it must be interpreted as applying, now quoting, only to physical conduct or fighting words that are specifically intended to hinder, delay, or obstruct a public officer. However, the court clarified that the statute, now quoting again, does not require the use of force or violence, and that a person's actions, e.g. blocking the path of an officer, or inaction, e.g. refusing to obey a lawful order, may constitute physical conduct that hinders, delays, or obstructs an officer. Finally, the court also noted that, quote, uh, of course, whether a person's physical conduct actually hinders, delays, or obstructs a public officer is a question to be resolved by the trier of fact in a given case. Now, although this case only discussed the obstruction statute, in the 2015 case of Scott versus First Judicial District Court of State, the Supreme Court let me know what y'all think down below. Do y'all think this cop is in the right or is he in the wrong? Me personally, I think the cop is in the wrong because first of all, he came out, he he got in his car, being aggressive already, he's rude. He's saying the dude is resisting. Where in the video was he resisting at? Where? Like Given the fact that both the resisting and obstruction statutes require an individual to act, quote unquote, willfully, and the case law interpreting the constitutional limits imposed on such laws, it is likely that a court would conclude that the resisting statute must apply only to physical conduct or fighting words that are specifically intended to resist, delay, or obstruct a public office. Officer. Likewise, in the 2023 case of U.S. versus Garcia, the U.S. District Court for the District of Nevada held that the lawfulness of a police officer's conduct was an essential element of the obstruction statute, and that because the officers in the case <coughs> lacked reasonable suspicion to detain a suspect, the individual could not be arrested for obstruction because, now quoting, they were not carrying out a lawful duty when they detained him. Now, we will discuss the legality of Mr. Gresham's detention later in this episode, but for now, it is important to note that if a court found the deputy did not have reasonable suspicion to detain him, it is likely that the court would also find that he could not be arrested for resisting. Accordingly, Mr. Gresham would be able to defend himself against a resisting charge by arguing that he did not specifically intend to resist the deputy, <laughs> that he did not engage in physical conduct or fighting words, and that the deputy was not acting within his lawful authority when he detained him. Some basic, you, like basic information. My name's James Gresham. You know my name. I asked you what your date of birth was. I don't have to answer your questions. Yes, you do. Well, I guess I do, huh? Yes. Because I'm being detained, yes. right? And I'm, this is an illegal stop. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Uh, yeah, fuck it. You're going, dude. I did about tase you. Is that your house? It is. Do you think that maybe you just answered a couple quick questions? But when you're rolling up here and then coming back. You told like, me to come back, so I came back. Yeah. And then I'm telling you to drop the bike. You're not dropping the bike. My and bike. then you push it. You're, you're trying to. Bike. And tense up on me. My hand. I didn't do nothing yes, on you. Yes, you did. I asked you why you were stopping me. Yes, you did. I saw you pull up here. That's why I turned around to come back. Because when I roll up for this bonfire. What do with me? You were there. I was just talking to them, asking yeah. them what's up with the bonfire. Oh, and they were okay. barbecuing. Imagine that. Did you stop and ask what? about the fire? I didn't. You took off. I'm like, where's I, this I guy going? To, I, wasn't, I didn't have to stop for you. What was my articulate reason for speaking? I already told you. To come here to stop me. I already told you. There is no crime. See, see, y'all, uh, this is. Literally why 
people do not like cops and they and cops wonder why people don't respect them why people don't respect the you know you know respect the, the, the you know what I'm saying whatever it is but this is why they now they now, now they wonder why people don't respect cops why they rule the cops because of this how are you supposed to be protect and serve but you don't do that you, you, if you're a cop you supposed to de-escalate the situation not increase it not increase the shit where now he's sending out now that the the citizen is an arguing and yelling and potentially can but can put himself in danger and you in danger see this is why motherfuckers do not like fucking cops I'm telling you, bro. I like to talk to you. Like fucking protecting right serve. That's just yeah, bullshit. Yeah, you can protect and serve my ass. The fuck are they protecting the serve? Nothing. Huge flames coming out. Yeah. I thought the oh. building was on fire. <laughs> Roll up. I'm like trying to ascertain what's going on. He rides off on the bike, and then, but it ends up being inside a barbecue, which I don't even know if that's legal. So I ride up. He's pushing his bike up here, and then it just went downhill from here. Now I'm debating whether. Uh, Take him, dude, just for obstructing. Yeah. It's not really, so he's riding his bike without a light. Yeah. Now I'm like, is this private property? Like, was it through here? He yeah. Did. So he came from this side and went through here. So it's probably uh, trade secrets, but not his. The deputies discuss whether Mr. Gresham violated the law by riding his bicycle without a light on private property. Section 484B.783 of the Nevada Revised Statute states that, quote, every bicycle when in use at night must be equipped with a lamp on the front which emits a white light visible from a distance of at least 500 feet to the front. However, Section 484B.760 clarifies that, quote, the provisions applicable to bicycles apply whenever a bicycle is operated upon any highway or upon any path set aside for the exclusive use of bicycles, electric bicycles, and electric scooters. According to section 484A.095 of the revised statutes, the term highway, as used in section 484B.760, means, quote, the entire width between the boundary lines of every way dedicated to a public authority when any part of the way is open to the use of the public for purposes of vehicular traffic, whether or not the public authority is maintaining the way. As such, it is high Highly probable that a court would conclude that the deputy did not have reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Gresham for riding a bicycle without a light in a private parking lot. Also, she's in about it. About what? Him taking the bike. Really? That's hers. Says that it always comes by, grabs it because it just sits outside in there. Oh. Um, he'll, he'll ride it and then bring it back and take it without asking it all that. Yeah, is that your bike, James? Okay. Now I'm like, eh, should I just take it for obstructing? I didn't want no trouble, so I left. The fire wasn't mine. Well, when I'm rolling up and you're leaving, it like... doesn't mean nothing. Sure it does. I wasn't asked to stop. What's that? I wasn't asked to stop. Because you took off. I wasn't asked to stop. Yeah, I that's why I came wrong. over here and told There's you to stop. There's no reason to stop me. What's your reason for stopping me? Go for What's your reason for coming over here? I'm on private property, man. Why did you come here? Flight from the cops. A flight from who? I did wasn't stopped. I know, because you didn't give me a chance. What are you so going went... to stop me for? See what's going on with this fire. It has nothing to do with me. Okay. How do I know that if you're leaving? It's not my fire. It's not my house. How I do don't I... live there. How do I know that when you well, take off? people live there barbecuing, right? You would have found out. Okay. Because they, they said they didn't. They didn't say they. The deputy argues that he had reasonable, <clears throat> articulable suspicion to stop Mr. Gresham based on his alleged so-called flight in the 2000 case. Let's... So you think it's him just because he's le? I just don't get it, bro. Like, I'm pretty sure you supposed to know what the dude is wearing, this and that, They're not to stop a random person. And think, oh yeah, that's him. Let's go stop him. Let's go harass him. The Supreme Court held that although, on, now, quoting, bro. an individual's presence in an area of expected criminal activity standing alone is not enough to support a reasonable, particularized suspicion that a person is committing a crime, an individual's headlong, unprovoked flight upon seeing a police officer when it occurs in a high crime neighborhood is sufficient to establish reasonable suspicion that the person is involved in criminal activity. In reaching this conclusion, the court noted that, quote, headlong flight 
flight, wherever it occurs, is the consummate act of evasion. It is not necessarily indicative of wrongdoing, but it is certainly suggestive of such. Notably, the Supreme Court had previously held in the 1983 case of Florida v. Royer that when an officer approaches an individual without reasonable suspicion or probable cause, quote, the person approached need not answer any question put to him. He may decline to listen to the questions at all and may go on his way. However, the court concluded in the Wardlow case that their holding was not inconsistent with the Royer decision, arguing that, quote, unprovoked flight is simply not a mere refusal to cooperate. Flight, by its very nature, is not going about one's business. In fact, it is just the opposite. Allowing officers confronted with such flight to stop the fugitive and investigate further is quite consistent oh, my with bad, the yeah, that's my bad, that's my individual's bad. right to my go bad, about yeah. his business or to stay put and remain silent in the face of police questioning. The court also responded to the argument that because there are innocent reasons for flight from police, flight is not necessarily indicative of ongoing criminal activity <laughs> by stating that, quote, this fact is undoubtedly true but does not establish a violation of the Fourth Amendment. Even in Terry, the conduct justifying the stop was ambiguous and susceptible of an innocent explanation. The officer observed two individuals pacing back and forth in front of a store, peering into the window and periodically conferring. All of this conduct was by itself lawful, but it also suggested that the individuals were casing the store for a planned robbery. Terry recognized that the officers could detain the individuals to resolve the ambiguity. However, it should be noted that the Wardlow decision involved an instance of headlong flight, not a situation where an individual simply walked away or left the scene at a normal pace. As such, the Ninth Circuit Court of Appeals, which has jurisdiction over Nevada, clarified in the 2011 case of U.S. v. Smith that an officer would not have reasonable suspicion to seize an individual, now quoting, had he simply continued to go about his business or walked away. Mr. Gresham's departure from the scene of the fire was not captured on the body camera, but if a court characterized his exit is merely going on his way rather than so-called headlong flight, it is likely that it would also conclude that the deputy did not have reasonable suspicion to stop him. Mm. On the other hand, if his departure was determined to be flight, the deputy probably did have reasonable suspicion to detain him. They, they said they didn't know who you were. That's what I'm telling you. Now that I know who you are, uh -huh. but I didn't know who you were. What I'm saying is this, what was your reason for stopping me? What was your reason for coming here? That. Because you're trying to get away from me. No, I didn't run from yeah. nobody. I went home. How are you going to get it? How is he trying to get away from I'm so confused. Uh, this is. Y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Like, do y'all think he was trying to run away or he was just going on his way and trying to go home? I... Usually she's home at night. I don't have to mm -hmm. answer this question. I'm not doing nothing wrong. Right, don't, don't answer the question. Listen, huh? hey, okay. listen, Carl. I'm not doing nothing wrong. I'm on private property. You're harassing me. You're I'm not harassing you. Right now. So I think she does live there. Yeah. Where was he at when he like, was he hiding? Was he in the grass or the paved portion? He's on the paved portion, like right by that yellow tarp thing. Looked like he's walking up there. So I was like, hey, where are you going? At so first I was like, yeah, he's riding bike with no light. Yeah. And I'm like, I don't know, dude. But I don't know if he's right, right, right there, yeah. I'm like, I'm wondering if, if just leaving when I roll up. First of all, he wasn't riding his bike with no light. He was walking with his bike. He wasn't riding the dumbass. Like an illegal flyer. Well, it's unsolicited flight. And then we have your RAS to stop him to begin yeah. with. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, that's unsolicited. It's not like you had your lights on when you did that. He just did it on yeah. his just Took off on his own. case and all that. So. But isn't mere flight not enough? Maybe like that, one more thing. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm inclined to take him with him about all this. All right, James, you want a supervisor? There's one down at the jail. You're going to jail, dude. what? Resisting. resisting. Okay, I'm not resisting. Don't, what are you doing, dude? I you, Face I, a car. I, okay, I'm putting your feet apart. Go ahead. The deputies discuss how they can justify the initial detention, and the arresting officer says oh that he is inclined gosh. to take Mr. Gresham to jail because of his quote-unquote bitching, seemingly referring to the fact that Mr. Gresham had challenged the legality of the seizure. The Supreme Court has repeatedly held that an officer's subjective intentions are irrelevant when determining the constitutionality of a seizure under the Fourth Amendment. Rather, a so-called objective reasonableness test is applied to the officer's conduct. For instance, in the 1996 case of Wren v. United States, the Supreme Court determined determined that police may stop a vehicle when they have probable cause to believe a civil traffic violation has occurred, even if the stop was a pretext for searching for narcotics, concluding that a stop is reasonable, now quoting, as long as the circumstances viewed objectively justify that action, and that, now quoting again, subjective intentions play no role in ordinary probable cause Fourth Amendment analysis. In the same
same vein, the Supreme Court held in the 2019 case of Nieves versus Bartlett that because, now quoting, probable cause speaks to the objective reasonableness of an arrest, in First Amendment claims involving a potentially retaliatory arrest, now quoting again, the presence of probable cause should generally defeat a First Amendment retaliatory arrest claim. Although the court acknowledged that, quote, a narrow qualification is warranted for circumstances where officers have probable cause to make arrests, but typically exercise their discretion not to do so, this exception to the rule can be challenging for individuals to prove. As such, it is likely that Mr. Gresham would not be successful in a retaliatory arrest claim if the court concluded that the deputy had probable cause to arrest him, even with the officer's admission that he was motivated by Mr. Gresham's speech in making the arrest. I didn't do nothing wrong. You don't listen. I do listen. I came right to you when you pulled up. You're the one who's running at me, not me at you, bud. Yeah, because you're trying to get away. Oh, you're trying to get away? What are you talking about? Yeah. It's on your body cam. It is. <laughs> Come on back here. <clears throat> we'll get it. Sure. And he wasn't trying to get away. I'm, I'm, I'm confused. How was he? I was trying to get away. You literally ran up to him. Literally, you literally ran up to him. Come here. Come here. Come here. What? You made a mistake, bud. After his arrest, Mr. Gresham was booked on a charge of resisting a public officer. Unfortunately, the court records are not publicly available and the status of this charge is unknown. The body camera footage of Mr. Gresham's arrest was shared on several YouTube channels in February and March of 2024. And on March 10th, 2024, Lyon County Sheriff Brad Pope issued a press release responding to public outcry. In defending and justifying the deputy's conduct, Sheriff Pope stated that Mr. Gresham, now quoting, is known to have a history of resisting and obstructing law enforcement. As well, the suspect of a multitude of crimes committed in Fernley. He also stated, quote, I have made it clear to my deputies and to the community that the Lyon County Sheriff's Office will aggressively pursue those that choose a life of crime I... over our quality of life. Our deputy was acting within the mission and direction that I want all of well, our see, deputies we, to abide by. Uh, Sheriff, do y'all think he was resisting though? To me, I don't think he was resisting. by taking full responsibility for the way the deputy acted as he was following the sheriff's direction and including a detailed list of the previous law enforcement contact the department has had with Mr. Gresham. It is unknown yeah, whether Mr. Not. Gresham has filed a complaint or intends to pursue legal action. Overall, the Lyon County deputies and Sheriff Pope get an F because although the investigating deputy may have had reasonable suspicion to detain Mr. Gresham, it is questionable whether he had probable cause to arrest him for resisting, and he openly admitted to being motivated by Mr. Gresham's speech in deciding to arrest him. Additionally, the deputy maintained a contemptuous and rude demeanor throughout the encounter, repeatedly employing name-calling and profanity when speaking to Mr. Gresham. Although Sheriff Pope indicated that the deputy was following his instructions in treating Mr. Gresham with a complete lack of professionalism, I strongly disagree with the sheriff's contention that officers can and should be aggressive and disrespectful to citizens who quote-unquote choose a life of crime. While officers can certainly keep their previous contacts with an individual in mind when approaching them, there is no excuse for using abusive and extreme language with a member of the public, regardless of their criminal history. This prejudiced mindset also <laughs> can lead to individuals being unfairly or unnecessarily pursued and arrested, as demonstrated by Mr. Gresham's problematic arrest in this instance. The department's contempt for Mr. Gresham was clear, both in the deputy's conduct and Sheriff Pope's statement. And this lack of professionalism appears to be a top-down problem in Lyon County. Mr. Gresham gets a B plus because although it is unclear whether he actually fled from the deputy, once he was ordered to stop, he did, and he was relatively compliant with the officer's orders while verbally challenging the validity of his detention and arrest. It is important to note that I cannot speak to Mr. Gresham's previous encounters with the Lyon County Sheriff's Office, and I have not considered any of Sheriff Pope's allegations about his previous conduct in assigning this grade. However, in this interaction, Mr. Gresham did not appear to do anything overtly illegal. And although there is an argument that he did not comply with the deputy's orders to set down his bike and get on the ground quickly enough, I personally do not believe that his conduct rose to the level of resisting or obstructing the deputy. Let us know if there is an interaction or legal talk. Uh, y'all let me know what y'all think down below. Was the cops in, was the cop in the right or was the citizen in the right? Y'all let me know down below, man. It's been you by my killing ass, man. I'm out.